Welcome back, ladies, blokes, and MB folks, to Brownlow Books. Um, I read an audiobook this week. Which, if you know me, I, I usually can't focus during audiobooks. Like, it's, I... The attention span is not there for them. Uh, I will never deny their right to exist, though, as you know if you've been here. Um, <laughs> but yes, I read one after being very busy this week and just needing to hear something that wasn't... musical? question mark. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I picked one that was available to me on Spotify for, you know, included in the price I already pay. <laughs> and I ended up with... turn. <laughs> Hard to see. If She Knew, Blake Pierce, uh, a Kate Wise mystery, book one. I am not gonna hold this the entire time because... bitch be heavy. All right. Right there maybe all right anyways whatever so like i said kate wise mystery book one okay i'm not in for a, a fucking <laughs> long ass fucking series of craziness right now it's just like if i like it maybe i'll do it in the future if not i don't fucking care i did not uh so <laughs> let's start with story uh so kate wise retired fbi agent dead husband, you know, the drill, your generic woman formerly of the FBI suddenly drawn back into a case thing. All right. So, uh, it was predictable AF. <laughs> it was also kind of boring. Um, like in the prologue, I'm like, ah, it's someone from the neighborhood. Someone, someone this person knows because they immediately know that in the rain, their security system acts up and doesn't work. So they pour water on it. I'm like, okay. This person knows personal details about this person because this is something you would complain about to, like, your neighbors. So, uh, yeah. Once I found out that there was a friend group of them, I was just like, it's a husband. Or it's a series of husbands doing a strangers on a train. Anyway, I was just like, yeah, 100% somewhere in here is going to be a husband fucking doing something. All right? <laughs> um... I have, in addition to it being predictable and boring, <laughs> I am really bothered by the fact that it starts with Kate Wise being pulled back into this investigation because it's her friend group of, like, other retired women who used to be, like, high-class professionals. Uh, yeah, she was bored as fuck, and one of them, their daughter, was the first person murdered. And they were like, oh my god, what's happening? And she got drawn in because, oh my god, I know she's, like, an FBI agent previously. So, like, ah, oh, yeah. And that ends up with her working back at the FBI. With a new young partner who's, like, been in major crimes but never on the street or something. I don't know. It was kind of weird. But, yeah. The family that, like, was like, oh, my God, my daughter's been murdered. They're just, like, completely forgotten about by, like, halfway through the book. Like, they're not even near the ending of, like, I was able to comfort my friend of what happened to her daughter. Like, nothing. Fucking nothing. Okay? Mm. So, I was like, additionally, in some points, there was weird things said. Like, she's in a fight with the guy at the end. And it was just such a weird language in the fight because she said something along the lines of, if not for us fighting, I would have thought he was trying to grab my breast. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> and there was just little things like that throughout the pepper throughout the book where I was just like, yeah. Kate Wise suffers by being written by a man. And then I thought about it and I was like, there are other parts of this that are clearly not written by a man though. Like it just, it felt so weird. There was parts that felt so weird that they were just like 100% a fucking man wrote this. <laughs> and other parts where I was like, ah, okay. And uh, so yeah, this led me down a fucking rabbit hole. All right. So I was like, I need to make sure, first of all, that Blake Pierce is a man. Because I've met girls named Blake. I need to find out for sure. So this led me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> Quite the rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> yeah, one photo exists in the entire internet of Blake Pierce. It looks like your generic stock photo, like, type in white man author of mysteries and, like, it looks like a fucking guy, all right? And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to their website. 
nothing. Does not mention their gender in their Goodreads profile. And I'm like, this is getting fucking weird. So naturally I turned to Reddit. <laughs> so I find a, a thread going on about Blake Pierce. How is Blake Pierce able to produce so many books in a year? And I'm like, okay, Danielle Steele puts out like fucking 10 a year. Like you could have a new Danielle Steele every fucking month. It feels like, all right. So I was like, okay, it, it's possible. It's possible. Some people can do that. But like just the generic looking women focused mysteries, it was kind of like, okay. So it was this big old fucking rabbit hole of people going, there's no way he's writing all these books. There's no way this is a real person. This is a pseudonym or it's like a Caroline Keene, you know, the Nancy Drew mysteries are all written by different people. Um, something like that. It's gotta be something like that, right? <laughs> so we went down a big old fucking rabbit hole of that. Somebody posted a link to, I think it was called Library Thing, where it like lists authors and like associated works with those authors. So it said Blake Pierce also writing as like this other person. I was like, but there's no way this Blake Pearson is a real person and can somehow get by with only one fucking photo on the internet of them when they're like an author of like, 20 fucking something books at this point. I was like, there's no fucking way. Like, do you know how many fucking generic ass mysteries he has? Like different series? I counted at least five. And then I think there were some standalones. And so I'm just kind of like, okay, this is getting crazy. <laughs> this is just weird. So between the number of books and like the change in voice. And then there was also like, while I was listening at one point, I was just like, that was a very British sentence. But like, it says they're American. And I was like, that sentence was like, I, I, I read a lot of British literature. I was like, this felt British. You know, just the choice of words that you're sometimes like, they mean the fucking same thing, but the Brits have their own word. We have our own word here in Canada. You have a different word for it in the US. You have another word for it in Australia. You know, the colonies. <laughs> and so it was just so weird to me that like, that was the language choice. And like I said, it felt like it changed back and forth between like a male author and a female author. So anyways, I found out a list of like 15 fucking names that people are like, these aren't real authors. They are like names used for like a group of authors that just kind of like writes whatever they're told to write. And I was like, this is baffling. This cannot be real. Like I understand like pen names and ghostwriters and all that kind of stuff. Like I understand the concept, but like having a group of people who all write all under these different names and none of them write for themselves. I was like, it's just kind of, it's a lot. <laughs> So yeah, that was the rabbit hole I went down. Have fun if you decide to go there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that leads me to believe that Blake Pierce is not a real person. And um, if all of the writing is as boring and generic and just highly unforgettable and dull as this fucking book was, I will be avoiding any and all names that are associated with that. Now, to be fair, none of the names I saw are books I own or have read. So I was like, it's not even like people I, like, I've seen bookers or hear about. So I was like, there's, who is, who, what, why? Why? So yeah, <laughs> it was just really, really weird, but gave me a nice break from work for like half hour. <laughs> yes, that's a deep dive for me because I am talented. All right. <laughs> it disappeared. So yeah, if she knew, Blake Pierce, a Kate Wise mystery book one, it's got just over, what do we have here? Like 19,000 reviews, ratings rather, on Goodreads, which is a fair number for something that I found so highly forgettable. <laughs> 3.95. But like, most of the reviews that I read were like, wow, this was boring. This was dull, forgettable, generic. Like, all of the use words that I've used to describe it were also being used in the reviews after I wrote my review. And I'm just like, the fuck is happening? <laughs> it was just, it's just all together. It was just, it's been so weird. It's been so weird. So yeah, not gonna continue with this if I want my, like, like, come on. Middle-aged women fighting crime is like dime a dozen these days. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, <laughs> not sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I will be avoiding. I have other things that are better than this that I can read for my generic want of women fighting crime. <laughs> oh, 
All right. I mean, it's just so bizarre. It's so bizarre. I suffers writing suffer suffers being written by a man and just maybe isn't a man. Like It's 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 interesting. It's weird. Um yeah. I mean, I know a lot of authors have used like initials or a pen name because they think that, you know, this being written by a woman is not going to be able to be read, or this being written by a man isn't going to be picked up to be read. Like, you know, old sexist garbage and shit. <laughs> but, um, saying this is written by a man would just be weird. Like, saying it's written by a woman would probably make them do better. But like I said, 19,000 is not that, not that horrible. Like, for something I literally found for free on Spotify. Like, <laughs> um... Since it was an audiobook, narrator, good, fine, acceptable. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a lot to compare to, but I know that there's like some really high production audiobooks and like this is not one of them, but she was clear, I forget what her name was. She was clear, enunciated well, but not like over the top. I have no problems with her. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but good, acceptable, like I said. You know, a generic voice for a generic book. <laughs> a little bit what it feels like. Anyways, I don't have much more to say about this. So thank you for hanging out, and I will see you around next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.